Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Sid. If you're new here, uh, consider subscribing, leave a like, a comment. Uh, it helps grow the channel. I'm almost at 25 subscribers in under a month, which is pretty cool. And if you are subscribed, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, nice to see you again, I guess. Let's get straight into it. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create tap to change eye color effect. Uh, slightly better than mine. As you can see, the eyes underneath are visible right now, but that's just because I didn't draw it right. They still track pretty well and look good. This is all the uh, patches in the patch editor that we'll be using. All of this is for the tap to change. And then this is to show some instructions when on the screen, when the user, when the user first opens the filter so that they know how to interact with it. So yeah, I'm gonna be doing red, black and white eyes today. Let's pause this and create a new, new scene, uh, which we don't immediately need. We're gonna pull up our photo editing software instead. I'm using GIMP, uh, Photoshop works just as well, but it's expensive and it isn't open source, so I prefer this <laughs> because I can actually use it. Uh, so now what we need to pull in is our reference assets, which you can get from the Spark AR website or by following the link in the description. Links to everything I'm using will be in the description down below. So I'm adding in the masculine face and the face track, uh, the face tracking mesh. Oh, and now once these are imported, you want to create a new layer. We're going to call this white eyes, maybe white eyes. Make this a little bit bigger. Now let's zoom in, and we can create our look. So basically you want to just use the free select tool and draw around these eyes as best as you can. Although honestly, I would probably try and draw as close to the edge of these red dots as you can because otherwise you might end up with the same issue I had at the start of the video, which is like a little bit of my real eye showing underneath. Obviously you could go back in and adjust these later, but for now, Oh, we want to do white first. White eyes. Yep. And we do the same for this other one. Oh. Like this. It doesn't have to be exactly inside the mesh. I'm just gonna more of this. It's more of a test, to be honest, because the eyes they tend to be a little strange sometimes with the how they fill in at the bottom. But anyway, now see, I don't like that. Now I gotta do it again. Sorry, feel free to skip this, speed it up, whatever. I'm just making this video in a bit of a hurry because I haven't uploaded anything today and you can see my views going down. Oh, my eye video that I made is already the most popular video on my channel. It has like 300 views, which is kind of fucking crazy. Uh, yeah, so now we've got these two uh, eyes done. What we want to do is make these layers invisible so that this is all that we have left as a transparent PNG file. And then we'll export that to the desktop as whiteeyes.png. Lovely. And so now that we've got our white eyes, we want to duplicate those two times and rename them as black eyes and red eyes. Now we don't actually have to make those in Photoshop because once you import the white eyes into Spark, you can just change the color. So it's not too big of a deal. So let's do that. Let's take these three assets that we now have and we'll import them into here. These new textures that we have ready to go. Uh, now we've got our scene. I'll switch over to the FaceTime camera so that it's a little bit more interactive. And the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is add our meshes. We want three meshes, one for each of our eye colors. And we'll just add those to our scene. And then you wanna make sure they're all nested inside of your face tracker. Not inside of each other, but inside the face tracker. So they're all sitting on top of each other like this. And now what you wanna do is control select all of them, come over to where it's visible, face tracking, and you wanna uncheck the eyes. You don't have to uncheck the mouth, but you can, I suppose. It depends what sort of look you're going for. I'm gonna leave the mouth as it is for now, uh, so that it doesn't change the color at all. Now you wanna create three material layers for these. So we'll rename these first of all to keep things simple. White eyes, black eyes, and red eyes. 
old red eyes is back. And now oh, uh, we'll add our material layers for all of this. So we've got white eyes, black eyes and red eyes again. And once we've got that, we can start actually adding our textures. You wanna come up into shader type and you can see these eyes are already a little bit crazy where they're being stretched out to fit inside of my face. No matter where I move, they're just being stretched. That's because they're a standard shader type. We wanna switch over to flat and we wanna do that for all of them because you'll then once you get to the red eyes, you'll be able to see it because it's the top layer. Everything goes flat and neutral. It's as if there's no color, no light being uh, reflected off of my face right now. Now we wanna add these textures in. So we come up here, we do white eyes. We import that. And you can't see it yet. So we'll do black eyes. Oh, I'm a moron. <laughs> it's already there. White eyes. Black eyes and red eyes. Okay, and as you can see, they're all white, <laughs> which is annoying, but we'll change that very quickly to black, and we'll change this one over here to red. You can come in and adjust the shaders and the, the actual hue yourself later. You can see these fill the, they fill out the eyes a little bit better. They're not exactly perfect. You could, like I said, you could take some more time and get this right, but the key is that they all look pretty solid. So now we've got our eyes. You can see the red ones on the top layer, but if I make them invisible, you see the black ones underneath. And if I make those invisible, you see the white ones underneath that. I will make them all revisible for a second now. And what I'm gonna do is control select all of them and make them visible with this button inside of our patch editor. So they'll all appear down here automatically in our patch editor. This is gonna be part of our circuit, this little patch, this patch selection that we're building. Uh, because it's a user interaction, first thing we're going to need is a screen tap. So if you double tap on the patch editor or bring up this menu, you can type in street screen tap. There's a lot of different interactions you can have, like nodding the head, opening and blinking the eyes, things like that. You can have it so that on an uh, eye blink, the, the colors change. We might show that. I might show you that at the end. So for now, we've got screen tap, and then you want to drag from the tap. You want to add a counter to that, which will count up in increments as we uh, change the color of our eyes. And we got it equals exactly, which is a Boolean function, which is a function that checks to, to make sure that two numbers are the same. This is a terrible tutorial. I recommend some of the other ones I've made, if you've even made it this far. And then what you wanna do is connect all of these up. Oh, or just move them around some more. And then you wanna connect them all up. So we've got white eyes, black eyes, red eyes, all connected, everything's looking great. Our maximum count here is five right now. Uh, so if I come up and simulate touch on this device, you'll see as it counts through, it's now iterating through to one, two, three, four, and then comes back to zero. So it, when you have a count that says maximum of five, it will start at zero and go zero, one, two, three, four, and then it will loop back around to zero. Because we only have three, uh, three different meshes that we're switching between. We only have three as our maximum count. So we're counting from zero, one, and two. So you see now these two are not visible anymore and it's just this top white layer. So now when I click, hopefully, yep, it switches and you can see the colors change. And you can see the actual increment of the, the counter going up and making different interactions and different things visible and invisible. So yeah, that's pretty cool, huh? Now that we've got that done, we're gonna add some instructions. So if you come up here to device and under uh, custom instructions patch, you wanna create instruction on opening. That'll create a bunch of new patches, dropping them right in the middle of your scene in a super annoying way. So you have to drag those out of the way, get them into a nice little clean place. You don't need to change anything in here really. What we'll do is come up to edit properties under project, capabilities, instructions, custom instructions, and then you wanna select the instructions to use. And there's a whole big list here. Like they're very specific, try with friends, pucker your lips, all kinds of stuff. But for now, we're just gonna use tap to change uh, because that's what we want. <laughs> so it creates this token here in the menu under capabilities. What you wanna do is copy this and then hit done. 
and paste it down here into the token section of our instructions. You can see the uh, time has already begun, but the video is paused now. So if I hit refresh and then play, you'll see that there are now instructions along the bottom of the screen. They'll play for five seconds and then disappear. And the timer will keep going because that's what less than does. So for as long as the timer is less than five seconds, the instructions will appear on the screen. Just like for as long as this equals exactly zero, one or two, it will be white, black or red. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this effect. The video went on a little bit longer than I was expecting. Uh, I'm rambling. I'm trying to make this in a hurry because I have work soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. My other video I made about eyes has about 300 views right now. Uh, it's the most popular video on the channel so far. Uh, so if you like this one, let me know and I'll make some more because I have another, I have a bunch of cool videos. I have a bunch more stuff coming out in the next few days. Uh, yeah, I never know how to end these things. It's super weird. Okay, so I wasn't expecting to have to edit this, but it's a couple minutes later and I've just realized that I didn't tell you about the compression thing. So because these are very small textures, uh, like tiny little images, basically when they get exported to test on your device or on the phone or whatever, they usually get like blurry and out of focus where if you're getting that problem then what you want to do is come down here to textures red eyes white eyes black eyes whatever textures you got control click all of those and then under manual compression you want to select no compression and that means that when it exports to all of these other devices it will export the way you're seeing it now rather than with that blurry sort of watery look that you might get oh and also if you come with project edit properties compression you can increase the quality here to 100% that will guarantee the same sort of thing. Yeah, that's it. Just a quick update adding on. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.